All right, guys. Today's world says, if it helps you, do it. And if it makes you happy, then it must be helping you. However, are the things you are doing actually helping? And are they really making you happy? This is Caleb's Take. Unpredictable. Very resourceful. Oh, master chef. A wisecracking know-it-all. Always improving himself. He is Caleb Clifford Jennings Betterton. This is Caleb's Take. All right, guys. Welcome to today's show. Today, a little special announcement to kick off the show. You can, right now, pre-order some t-shirts we're going to be selling here for $15 a piece. Has our Just logo on there, our new logo on there. Pretty cool. If you're interested in pre-ordering, shipping not included, send us an email or come talk to us if you know us at synergistmg at gmail.com. If you want to pre-order a t-shirt or again, if you know me, come see me. They're 15 bucks a piece, shipping not included. But if you're interested, let us know. Also, quick thank you again to Pastor Jason Sharp for being on the show last week and doing the interview with us. If you haven't heard it yet, go check it out. Go listen to it. You can also watch the full interview on YouTube. Link in the show notes below. It's, it's fantastic. And I wanted to share some advice he gave me years ago at this point. And I was younger. And sometimes the best advice you're given is kind of the most obvious advice. But it's just not obvious in the moment. And I'd bought a book from Pentecostal Publishing House. We were hosting a district conference or something like that at our church. And so they were there at our church. And we I'd bought this book. It had been recommended a few times by people. And it was probably the book at the time. And I get it, and I'm having my bag, and a pastor walks by, stops, we start talking. Then he asks me, what book did I get? And I show him the book, and he's like, well, why are you reading that? I'm like, oh, well, um, you see, uh, um, uh, it was recommended, uh, it's good, I don't, I don't, well, you see, uh, you know, I really have an answer for him. It has been recommended, and it was supposed to be good, so I, I bought it, you know, 13 or 14 on me. And he says, Brother Caleb, you need to get books and read books that are for where you're at in your life. That will help you where you're at. And again, that's very obvious advice. But sometimes the obvious advice is the most important advice you need. It's the most impactful advice. I've never forgotten that. And I've made it my purpose to, when I read books or get books, to make sure they're for where I'm at. They're for what I need in that moment. And if you're getting into reading for the first time right now, find books for where you're at. Identify what you need or ask leaders, what do I need and have them and get books for where you're at and then read those books and apply those books to your life and it'll make reading a whole lot more effective in your life than reading books that may or may not have any benefit for you. So I wanted to share that advice Pastor gave me a long time ago in honor of that interview. Again, if you haven't watched the interview yet, go check it out and either listen to it or watch it. Last week's episode, you can listen to it on this on this feed here or watch it on YouTube. Link in the show notes below. So go check that out. Coming up next, I have a warning and some terrifying information to share with you. So guys, I was reading some articles today and going through the Apple News feed I have for different articles and stories that I save for the podcast or just for my own interest or um, getting my own knowledge, understanding on issues and topics. And I came across an article by Newsweek that says crocodiles can identify and respond to the sound of human babies crying. They hear the sound of a baby crying and boom, they are moving towards that sound. Where's the baby? I'm hungry. I can eat that. It's easy prey, and they're after it. So mothers, beware. If you have a newborn baby, if it's crying, keep an eye out. The crocodile may be coming. And I have a theory on this. As most of you know, who are somewhat biblically educated, which if you're listening to this show, you probably are. 
Welcome to the Smart People Show, Caleb's Take, if you didn't know. And uh, the, the Pharaoh, back in the day, from the time of Moses, when Moses was a baby, would throw the male babies into the Nile. In this article, it says the Nile crocodile is the one who can do this. And maybe the story has been passed down, not only the story of Moses to the humans, but maybe the crocodile has passed down the story or has in their DNA, it's been transmitted in their minds and their DNA from generation to generation since then that when a baby cries, it's dinner time, that it's easy prayer. They're going to be fed. And so when they hear the sound of a baby crying, boom, instant, they're ready to go. Where is it at? I'm hungry. It's quite terrifying if you think about it. That's why if you live in those areas, or maybe you don't, make sure to watch your baby if it's outside. Because I don't know how many stories I read on the daily of people getting attacked by alligators or crocodiles. And imagine they hear your baby crying and boom, they're there. So beware all you those who are around crocodiles. And I know I'm going to get emails for this because there's going to be some new mothers, probably Heidi. Probably hiding. He's just emailing me saying, I'm not having dreams about my baby getting attacked by a crocodile because it's crying. And I'm sorry. I am just bringing a public service announcement. Okay? A public service announcement to y'all. To let you know, listen, if your baby's crying, watch out. The croc might be a coming. Coming up next is Caleb's take. In 1 Samuel 30, we see David lose everything. All his possessions, his family, everything that's valuable to him, taken by the enemy, and everything that was left was burned. Now, talk about a bad day. That probably ranks up there when it comes to bad days in history for a certain individual. I know Job probably has the number one spot, but David's up there for this one. Top 10 probably. Maybe higher. I don't know. Job, again, Job has some, Job has the, uh, the top spot and maybe a few other spots on there for sure because Job had some bad days. But David's probably up there when it comes to this day. But we can all relate to David. We've all had bad days. We've all had days things just, just didn't go right. Maybe a bad report card. Maybe a vehicle broke down. Maybe even losing a loved one. Bad days happen. Rough days happen. And they can vary from losing a loved one to just Nothing going right that day. Bad days happen. But what do you do on bad days? Some people get the ice cream out, the pizza, the junk food, and eat their feelings away. They feed their feelings. While others may cover their head with covers and blankets and go to bed and just stay in bed all day and try to ignore everything that's going on around them. Others but turn on YouTube, TV, movies, and try to binge their feelings away. But David didn't do any of those things. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, we see that David delighted himself in the Lord. He turned to God. He turned to God. While our flesh... And the world recommend the things I mentioned earlier. The true source for overcoming bad days or even bad weeks is turning to God. Now, David not only turned to God, he also asked God what he needed to do. Then he obeyed the voice of the Lord and God restored everything the enemy had taken from him. His family, his possessions, God gave it back to him because David turned to the Lord, asked him what to do, and then he obeyed what God said. David would have never gotten back what was taken from him if he would have done any of the things I mentioned earlier. If he would have pursued the world's pleasures and so-called comforts, he would have never gotten back anything. And neither will we. The only true help and happiness comes from delighting 
yourself in the Lord on those bad days. David's first thought was to go to the Lord because he had a relationship with him. Oftentimes, for being honest, the reason we don't go to the Lord first is because we have a stronger relationship, a stronger connection with the world's pleasures. The world's desires, things the world say will comfort us, the world's comforts, the world's pleasures, the things I mentioned earlier. We have a strong relationship with those things and connection with those things than we do with our Heavenly Father. Something about we tend to turn to the things we are closest to, the people we are closest to during our harder times. And if our first thought is to go to YouTube to eat our feelings away, to go hide in bed, then what is a relationship with God built on? We must build a strong relationship with our Father and begin to weaken and ultimately destroy the relationships we've made with the world's comforts. When we do that, we will find ourselves delighting in the Lord and getting back everything that has been taken from us. This has been Caleb's Take. All right, guys, thanks for listening to today's show. If you want to help us out a little bit, here are some free ways you can do that. First off, leave a review, five stars, and a comment down below. It helps out a lot when it comes to this podcast growing and people actually stopping listening to the podcast. When they see a lot of reviews, they see a lot of five stars, they're more likely to listen. So the more there are, the better it is for the show. So it's free. If you can do that for us, we appreciate it. Also, if you want to follow us for more content, check us out on social media at SynergistMG on Twitter. Also, Real Synergist on Instagram. If you want to watch more content, want to see our faces, you can go and click on the YouTube link in the show notes below and watch last week's interview as well as other content, vlogs, that kind of thing on our YouTube page. Again, link in the show notes below. Also, share this podcast. It helps out a lot. Share with your friends, your enemies, your neighbor, your best friend, your worst friend, anybody and everybody. Share this podcast. Say, hey, I enjoy this podcast. This podcast makes you laugh. It's encouraging. Whatever this podcast does for you, let them know so they can check it out and become a part of this community as well. Again, thanks for listening. You guys are the best. Shout out to all of you who share this podcast and are a part of this. We love you. We appreciate you. You're the best. We'll see you next time. Bye.